All right, so we got to talk about when to take Social Security. You don't need to justify it to me that you can take it to take it at 62. I don't care. I got an email from this guy, Keith, we'll call him Yellow Teeth Keith, who I can tell in his email is trying to justify taking it early. And his email is wrong in many ways, and I'll share with it. And it's just like, dude, I, I, it's like, take it early. I don't care. You don't need to justify it, dude. I'm not going to bless you for it. I, I just, it's the weirdest thing to me. I get these emails I, or the comments all the time. Like I'm taking it at 62 because I'm not st stupid. I'm taking it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, it's crazy. It's the weirdest thing, man. And that's why I guess, what's that guy's name? And uh, Tim, whatever his name is down there in Florida. I don't know. I, I, he has not popped up my screen lately. So I don't know what the hell is going on with that guy. And I, look, I don't hate the guy. I, don't, I literally could care less. But maybe that's the reason why he's got so many loyal fans because he a lot he justifies them to take at 62. I'm not going to do that. I'm just not. I'm not going to yell at you if you take at 62. I'm just not going to do it. But when you're doing it based on faulty numbers, uh, we got a problem, especially if you're using your faulty data and trying to prop you, propagate or, or propose it as if you have a uh, uh, an understanding that you don't. All right, if that makes sense. So let's just go into this email. It actually kind of ticks me off. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, because I, I hate when people use a data set and they come across it from a, uh, a uh, appeal to authority, which is what this guy's kind of doing. I hate it. I hate that appeal to authority stuff. Oh, I got a Nobel Prize in economics. We should listen to him. I do. It drives me freaking crazy. Um, Paul Samuelson has a Nobel Prize in economics. And in 1989, Paul Samuelson was saying the Soviet Union's economy would beat the U.S. in a matter of years. It just freaking stupid. All right, so love your stuff. And then he says, 8.8% of 62-year-old men will not live until 67, let alone 70 or 80. And he says, delaying taking Social Security is a benefit to the government or the house if you're a gambling man, which, of course, I'm not because I like women. All right, if I was a man who did not like women, I might be a gambler. But because I like the ladies, I am not a gambling person. He says he, this is his appeal to authority. I worked in insurance for a large insurance company for decades. In fact, I was even on the actuarial team for a couple of years. That appeal to authority doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I've learned a bunch from that. Pull the data from the Social Security life period, uh, period life tables. Since no one should trust a link from a Google, from a stranger, you can Google this yourself and find the data. No! Holy crap! Keith, I can... What? There's data out there? Who knew? And if you do, it tells you the mortality per year by age of teens. Be sure you're, and he tells you what to do. Be sure you're doing this. When I was in the Army, I'll never forget. I just got back from Ranger School. We had a new guy as my roommate, uh, a guy from Minnesota. So basically, I was six months out from getting out of maybe, yeah, six to nine months out from getting out of the military. By then, I was like E4. And we got this new guy coming up who was my new roommate, because my old roommate, uh, ETS, Shoemaker, was freaking awesome. And uh, I'll never do this guy. He's like, just, he was, he, he was, I'll never get him tell me, he goes, you know, be, you know, make sure you do this with our room or make sure you do that. I'm like, dude, <laughs> oh my, I'll never forget that. I was like, you, wait, you're telling me this? Uh, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you're the new guy here, man. You, you don't tell me what to do. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to when we're having an inspection of our barracks. I was like, no, no, no. I tell you what to do because I've been through this for, for years. I, I'll never forget that. Yeah, it still sticks with me. It annoyed me then. It annoys me now when a guy with less experience tells me how to do my job, essentially. Um, and I'll just never forget because I had just got back from Ranger School. This guy just got into our unit, uh, just out of, you know, fresh out of basic training. And he, you know, our, he, his first inspection, because what would happen, the first sergeant would come by. And sometimes even the battalion commander would come by. The lieutenant, was the lieutenant colonel, battalion commander, I think so. And uh, and we'd come and do inspections where you got you'd wipe the top of the uh, the window sills and stuff like that, make sure there's no dust and whatnot, and uh, everything. I'd be dressed right, dressed. I'll never forget this guy. We you know, we probably three weeks into our unit, saying, "Make sure we you you do this." I was like, dude, you're know, freaking, it's crazy. All right. So anyway, since uh, let's see, you should see in column number two that 1.5 percent of 62 year old men will pass away this year. Add up the numbers. Add up the years. The numbers get scary. And then he says, key takeaways. Women are less likely to die than men every year. What? Oh, I, who knew? Did you know that? I didn't know that. 8.8% .8 of men who turn 62 will not see their 67th birthday. All right. Delay break-even point. Using my own benefit number, says the LTF Keith. 
Waiting until 67 is full retirement age increases my distribution by roughly 900 bucks a month. Over those five years, though, I will have received $115,000 in cumulative distributions. The FRA cumulative does not balance out until 78. That's my break-even point. What? Who? I didn't know 78 was a break-even point if you take it early. Who knew? That, oh, man, Keith, you got to call Congress, man. You got to get out there on freaking the Joe Rogan podcast because no one knows this. Please tell people. Of course, then he says, that assumes I blow the money. If I saved $115,000, that number would never catch up. Okay, well, I've done videos on that too, where the silliness of that argument. But again, Keith has just came across my videos, I guarantee. And now he's like, I'm going to tell this guy how smart I am to justify my own reason to take Social Security early. Then he says here, which pisses me off. Break even unlikely to happen for most, for most. That's not true. For men, assuming 78 is the same break even age, which it is, or 80 if you're taking it later at 70. Uh, unfortunately, 50% of men turning 62 will never see their 78th birthday, the 79th birthday, excuse me. The house wins. Huh? You sure you want to go that route? You're saying the majority of men who turn 62 will never see their 79th birthday? You sure you want to go that route? Why delay past 62? And then he says, then he says, you know, you have some, you've answered that to some regard. All right, so let's go into the actual numbers here. All right. So we're going to look at some data sets from the CDC. This is if you're a 65, all right? A male's life expectancy at 65 is 17 years old. The 17 more years, which is I, my Caveman mind says 82, right? That's your life expectancy if you're a male at 65. But Josh, that's not 62. Here's your odds of living if at a certain attained age. And we see, we'll see men right here. All men is in the second column, or the third column, I guess. At 65, it's 17.8 years. All men at 60 is 21, point, 21 years. So at 62, it's about 20 years or so. That's 82 years old. All right, so again, the likelihood of you living as a male at 60 is 21.3 years. That's an 81.3 life expectancy. At 65 is basically 18 years, which is uh, 80, whatever that is, 83, something like that, 65 plus 18. So you factor into both around 80 to 81 years old. And that's just all men. You take in white men, which what I am, a white guy, you know, got my, I got a, my white privilege card right here so we got all total male female hispanic whites so us whiteies right here we gotta go to male which is right here if we're 60 years old our life expectancy is 21.5 and if we're 65 years old is 17.9 hispanics life expectancy for men i'm not hispanic so for me that's not relevant but it might be for you maybe keep this hispanic i don't know but he's not it's 22 years. So Hispanic men have a longer life expectancy than Hispanic, than a white men, which is obviously discriminat discriminatory. So, I mean, we'll see if we can't make this. It doesn't, by the way, Asians live longer than any of you, which is inherently is discriminat it's discriminatory against us whiteies. We need affirmative action now. Women live longer. We need affirmative action now. For white men, we're being discriminated against. Black men too. So let's join forces, black men and white men, and say we need affirmative action now because we're both being discriminated against when it comes to life expectancy. Now that's just basic racial characteristics. Your sexual organ plus your racial characteristics. I work out a lot. I walk four miles a day on a treadmill going up a, a steep climb, incline. I'm outside getting that vitamin D. I don't stress that much because life is good. I don't commute freaking an hour each way on a 400 and then 85, 75 down to Atlanta. So I'm not on the road, which is very risky. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do any drugs. You know, I got a beautiful, beautiful wife, the most beautiful wife on all YouTube. And if you say otherwise out there, you're wrong. You're getting banned. I got two dogs that make me happy. I eat well. I eat tons of red meat. I don't, I try to avoid a lot of high fat stuff, high, not fat stuff, high sugar stuff. Even though I don't really do a good job, but still. Pretty healthy guy. Now, if I smoked, if I drank, if I drove drunk, if I did a motorcycle, if I was 50 pounds obese, I'm eating freaking hot dogs every day. That's a whole different story. So I don't know about Keith, but just a, his, his whole number set is just incorrect, man. 
Now, will he be? And then, never mind the fact I got a wife who's four years younger than me who has who's earned, earned significantly less income than I have. All right. So for me, it's a matter of do I want to leave my wife a lower benefit upon my demise or a higher benefit? Inherently, I want to leave a higher benefit. Again, if you're single, on the other hand, I don't have any problem taking a 62. I just think married men should think twice because it's not just you, it's your spouse. And if also, if you got young kids, and more and more men are having young children. I got a guy who I am working with. I said, you should take a 62 because you got a child that's like nine or something like that. He's getting jiggy with his younger wife when he's uh, in his mid-50s. Kudos to him, man. He's still, he's still uh, populating the world with kids to pay our Social Security. But you don't need to justify it to me. But if you're going to do it, don't send me a long email and saying, hey, essentially, essentially saying, look, this is why I did it. I don't care. I just don't get it if you got a wife, man. If you got a wife, unless your wife's significantly older than you and not in good shape, well, even then, I don't get it necessarily. I don't know. All right, just to each his own. But I don't need the justification. I'm not going to bless your decision. I'm not going to bless your decision if you wait till 70. I don't care. I just put up the data set that's legitimately of a concern to you, my friends out there in YouTube land, to say, huh, here's an aspect we haven't thought about. All right, all right. love to your thoughts. God bless. Uh, I guess real quick. The reason I don't like the life expectancy numbers, and I'm, he's using a social security data, and I've done a thousand videos on that data set, man. It's crazy. Um, I just, the whole thing with life expectancy is a lot of people think their life expectancy is 78, but that's life expectancy at birth. If you're watching this channel, inherently, you're going to have a different life expectancy than a life expectancy at birth because you're not a newly born baby. I know it's crazy, and some of you act like it, but you're just not. No. Love your thoughts. God bless. We'll see you.